Ugh, this is why I don't get into the politics of the world. I just go in and shoot things. If there's one thing my girlfriend struggles with, both in and out of games, it's her indecisiveness. So this week, I decided to throw her into a game series where she'd be making plenty of big decisions. Oh my god, I have to pick one of them again? Ugh. The Mass Effect trilogy seemed like a great fit, because many of the big choices you make won't have repercussions until the later games in the series. As good as she's gotten at games over the years, to this day, she doesn't trust her own decisions in them. No ability point gets spent, or new skill gets unlocked, without her asking me to come and check her work first. I love that we're wearing, like, eyeliner on the field. By sending her through the Mass Effect series, hopefully she can build some confidence and be more decisive. Games are a journey, and part of the journey is living with your decisions. <laughs> what the they're, they're is that the kind of person we want protecting the galaxy? That's the only kind of person who can protect the galaxy. Darn you. I pitched Mass Effect to her as a sci-fi shooter with a side of galactic politic, but in reality, I think it's the other way around. I'm a tough babe, that's what. Yeah, she looks so cool! The politics are far more interesting than the actual gameplay. As I've gotten older, I felt more and more like the gunplay was the side, with my main focus being the diplomatic relations with the Citadel Council. <laughs> this mission just got a lot more complicated. As it turns out, there's a lot of red tape to navigating an intergalactic conference. If you've got something to say, just say it. <laughs> Your people are still newcomers, Shepard. The galaxy can be a very dangerous place. For my girlfriend, I purposely left out the importance of her dialogue because I wanted her to initially think that the heart of her challenge was somewhere in the gunplay. Frankly, the less she knows, the better. I think it's about time we told the commander what's really going on. Yeah, thank this you. Is far more than a simple shakedown run. Being able to fully customize her character and model Shepard after herself played well for her and got her excited about discovering more about the strange new world. The beacon's your top priority. But what if I want to help the survivors? Despite picking a background during creation, Shepard is mostly a blank slate, which is good for getting her acclimated. I move faster on my own. Uh, so he's been a hero. Or mega suspicious. It's a lot of deep history to mankind, but it's dwarfed in comparison to our galaxy as a whole. What's going on over we see? <gasps> Robots! No! My guy's dead! And uncovering those mysteries as Shepard allows her to learn along with the character, make decisions based on what she interprets. <gasps> Are there more people like his people? Saren. What in the world? So they clearly know each other. Right from the get-go, Mass Effect wastes no time expanding the scope of the player's world and exposes the colossal size of our galaxy. The situation's bad. Don't worry. I've got it under control. <gasps> oh no! Careful! Nihilus! 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 No! No! Sarah just killed Nihilus! So many new sentient aliens are introduced, and humanity being relatively new to the equation really puts into perspective how small we all are. So this is the beacon. Okay, so we gotta get this beacon somehow. Don't get too close. No, don't, don't get too close. Uh oh, he's being lured. Oh, I told you not to get too close. Uh oh, oh no, I sacrificed myself for the guy. No, the beacon has me. That's supposed to happen. Starting from the bottom of the food chain in a game like this puts things into perspective. Zarin's dangerous and he hates humans. In a game like The Witcher, she found it fun that Geralt commanded some level of authority with strangers by virtue of being a Witcher. Here in Mass Effect, Shepard isn't given the same respect. Whoa, this is the Citadel? That's crazy. If you recognize anything from Mass Effect, it's probably the N7 found on Shepard's uniform. N represents being part of special forces, and seven is the highest rank possible. Among humans, Shepard is one of the best on offer, but being a human isn't exactly something to brag about on the Citadel. What about Seren? You can't just ignore a rogue specter. I demand action. He's totally to like space politics. Not having a human representative on the seat of the council means that friends are a lot harder to make than enemies around here. I can Send take Saren down. The commander's right. Yep. There is a way to stop She's Saren like, and yeah, the do it. It's no brainer. Duh. No, it's too soon. Humanity is not ready for the responsibilities that what? come with joining the Spectres. Yeah, she doesn't believe him either. Her first handful of missions made that fairly clear for her. Do I get to be a Spectre Commander now? Shepherd, step forward. Yo, I'm gonna be a Spectre now! Ha <laughs> ha! Aye aye, Captain. But earning the respect of these characters is also part of the fun. You are the first human Spectre, Commander. Yeah! I'm a Spectre, baby! 
<laughs> About time. As the first human specter, she's given the honor of commanding the Normandy. I've got big news for you, Shepard. Captain Cow. Anderson is stepping down as commanding officer of the Normandy. This ship is yours now. Yo, he gave me the Normandy? This will be her base of operations through the rest of the game. She got a lot of stars to cover, and this baby's equipped with all the necessities. Yo, I get Joker as my driver. She got an internal emission sink stealth system for those planetary surveys where she needs to keep the heat off her back, not to mention the Tantalus core, state-of-the-art drive core, which is proportionally twice the size of the others on the market. Wait a minute, am I reading this correctly? Apparently it's even got the Manscaped Forged Gold Lawnmower 5.0, so I guess even her crewmates can stay groomed. I'll let our commanding officer take over and tell you more. The Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra Forged Gold is a special edition trimmer where performance meets luxury. Usually their tools and trimmers are in black packages, but no expense is spared for a Spectre, and this comes in all gold packaging. I guess that's why they call it the gold standard of groin grooming. Let me put it this way. When it comes to smoothing over a rocky relationship with the council, nothing works better than a golden touch. I thought I was a smooth talker, but that was before I saw the lawnmower in action. The upgraded trimmer blade features longer, wider, and rounded teeth that cut through hair with ease. While gentle on skin, make no mistake, it's a powerhouse that could give the tantalus core a run for its money. It also comes equipped with a second head, and the foil blade is designed to leave you with a sleek and bare finish. Its next-gen dual skin-safe blade heads are easy to switch out and make it so the only cuts you should be experiencing are out on the battlefield. Not to mention, it's waterproof, has a rechargeable battery, and also features an LED light with dual temperature feature to complement a variety of skin tones. The trimmer features a travel lock, which is perfect for when the Normandy gets propelled by the mass relays. This feature ensures that no space commander finds their battery empty by the time they reach orbit at their next destination. So what are you waiting for? Do the universe a favor. Head over to manscaped.com and seize your Forge Gold Edition now. Use our promo code BOYMEETSGIRL to get 20% off plus free international shipping at checkout. Your balls will thank you, and so will your girlfriend. I mentioned it before, but what makes this trilogy of games special is that they're all connected. It always feels like your actions have meanings and consequences because there are so many things that carry over into the sequels. She won't be able to properly appreciate it for now, but I look forward to the revelations about her decisions down the line. Oh, I like that. Yo, I like that one. If I'm like thinking about it, they'll like remind me what they said. Dialogue trees play a big role in these games, and Mass Effect utilizes a morality system that divides down two paths throughout the series. The Paragon and the Renegade represent these paths. Boiled down for simplicity's sake, Paragon actions are usually compassionate ones, while Renegade are the more ruthless alternative. I feel like we gotta take them out. Too many people died here, Fist. You don't get to walk away. <laughs> so far, the story has taken her on a journey to track down a rogue specter named Saren. By proving that Saren was guilty, she's managed to trip herself backwards into becoming a specter herself. And now she's got to track him down and find out what he's up to. What's my first mission? We're sending you into the Traverse after Saren. He's a fugitive from justice, so you are authorized to use any means necessary to apprehend or eliminate him. As the new commander of the Normandy, she's got a team of crewmates who will join her on this adventure. Depending on how she handles herself, some of them might not be around anymore by the time we reach Mass Effect 2. Damn, she's cool! Who is this? No! Don't let the robots get him! As far as recruitment goes, not all these characters are required to beat the game, but as far as she was concerned, the more she could get, the better. Oh, go girl! The cast of characters who can join your crew in Mass Effect is a colorful one, with humans and aliens alike. Where the hell are you going, dude? Guys, why did you let him just run a in front of you like that? They all have their own motivations for joining you, and each has something to gain from helping Shepard complete her mission. By getting to know her companions, she stands to learn a lot more about the galaxy, and hopefully some of its mysteries. <gasps> What the hell is the conduit? That's Saren's voice. This proves he was involved in the attack. Oh, what's the conduit, though? Who you take on missions can actually affect a lot of the dialogue choices. Commander, maybe we ought to tell Liara that her mom's here, or bring her along. It might take Benezia off guard. Okay, I might go grab her then. I can rock a girl crew. Although my girlfriend had her favorites of the crew, it was this reason that she liked to vary up who she brought along on each mission. Okay, we're gonna take you and you. She commented several times how surprised she was at some of the things they had to share whenever she brought them to a new place. This is an outrage. I'll see that you never work in this sector again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, get a move on. <laughs> you, Shepard, I demand you place this bitch under arrest. Whoa. You have the right to remain silent. I wish to God you'd exercise it. <laughs> the galaxy, Commander. Man, she is really sassy here. when she's not undercover. <laughs> the characters are really likable, so there's really no wrong choice. But the fact she felt a genuine connection with them goes to show how immersive the Mass Effect world is. I think I'm making my companions car sick. <laughs> 
Oh, I feel kind of bad for him. I'm having a blast, but I think that's because I'm the driver. She grew really attached to these companions, and not understanding how these games worked, assumed that when they died in a mission, they were gone for good. Wait, is he dead? Uh... Sir? She didn't know this for a fact, but wasn't willing to take the risk. It wasn't until editing and post where I was reviewing her footage and noticed all the clips of her just letting herself die on purpose. Uh, you need to... No! After asking her for an explanation, I got only the most classic of girlfriend answers. Okay, guys. Let's try this again. So apparently what happened was when a teammate died, she'd intentionally get herself killed so she could restart the section and see them make it through to the end. Good work, everybody. Good job staying alive this time. Little did she know that this is in fact a video game, and there are ways to revive companions when they die during gameplay. We trained better than this, guys. Come on. But I guess it's fitting that the captain goes down with her ship. Okay. We're having a pep talk, guys. We're not gonna die, okay? So don't be stupid and follow my orders. For most players, diversity of choice is a good thing, and it makes the game more engaging. For my girlfriend, all those options can sometimes end up becoming overwhelming. Oh damn, if I hold it down, I can get... <laughs> oh my god. I bring this up because in the past, skill trees have been the natural predator of the girlfriend. In the beginning, I talked about my girlfriend's indecisiveness and how I wanted to stress test it with the dialogue choices. The reality is, that's only half the battle. I have three points to spend. Why can't I use sniper rifles? I thought that's what I chose. So there are menus upon menus upon menus of things to level up and spend points in as well. And I did my best to dodge helping her with any of them. With that being said, I have never seen her spend as much time in a game's upgrade system as she did here. I have 12 points. Okay, I'm gonna use bathroom and then I'm gonna spend these points. Early on, she didn't even realize she could switch up her weapons. And it wasn't until she found a cool rifle in a crate that she stopped and tried to figure out where it disappeared to. Ooh. See After digging around in the menus, she finally discovered the talent card and realized she could spend points on things. I, uh, I did not realize that I could level up my friends. <laughs> Having picked the infiltrator class because of their proficiency with sniper rifle, she couldn't figure out how to level up her skill with the rifles. As it turns out, she needed points spent into pistols before she could actually level up her snipers. Man, I've been using the base stuff for ages. Spending points in the wrong skills is always something that's made her anxious, but by the end of the game you usually have so many points it doesn't matter. For instance, she really loved the look of the starting N7 armor set. I love her outfit. And ended up never changing out of it for the entire game. Ooh, okay. So let's check out. I don't like that nearly as much. Duh. Aside from the armor being pretty squishy, I don't think it really hurt her experience with the game. So this is like a badass outfit. And look at how much better this new one is compared to my old one. And I just don't care because it does not look as cool. <laughs> so I just have to get good. She augmented it and gave it a bunch of modifiers to make it do its job, and she figured out all out by herself. So I just put um, a shield regenerator, which I just learned that if I press X, I can, this is how I put in all. So I've been, look at this, I hack everything and get all these upgrades. So anyway, I have a lot of assault rifles. Certainly wasn't optimal. It was probably an uphill battle for a while, but she managed to spend her points just fine. That's a good thing too, because she had to do it for the entire team as well. Oh, yo, Kate and I have to level you up. You're only at 50, or like you literally have 53 points. <laughs> I think this might have been one of the first missions since the beginning that I brought him on. Oh, no. Oh, no. Why did I bring him into a field of snipers? I thought we were ready. At the end of the day, Mass Effect is all about exploration. Human beings' innate desire to explore is part of what landed them in hot water with the Council in the first place. Having already seen every corner of our home planet, in Mass Effect, we're essentially handed an entire galaxy to investigate. There's such a rich history to explore, and the mystery of it all is what drives her to uncover every ounce that she can. In one more, three, now I can get to the Citadel, which is like the capital city of like the whole like universe as far as I know. It's like giant. Look at that. Ironically, I swear the galaxy used to feel bigger than this. First of all, I'll show you how, like, how big this all is. So this is like one little like solar system and each one kind of has one that I can like explore. Not all planets are actually explorable and several clusters of stars are just text boxes waiting to be hunted down. Nonetheless, there's still something so magical about darting across the stars and landing in a new location. See, so this one has like quite a few, but like if you like look at this one, like Pharos, you can just survey it. So it gives some information about it. So Turian insignia discovered, <gasps> interesting. Of the planets you can land on though, I was equally shocked at how rudimentary some of them were. 
Look at us go! The reused assets across several of them made many structures look and feel the same. Although in my youth, these worlds felt so colossal. Despite all this, my girlfriend preferred the familiarity of these areas and had that little kid brain of seeing everything magnified from her perspective. Damn. Oh, I have guns! Awesome! Oh. Oh, I'm overheated. The most important thing to remember is that this is an established world, and the game never stops reminding you of it. As she went about her campaign, she passed plenty of NPCs with their own goals and motivations. One guy's training to be a pilot, Porter's looking for an interview. What impressed her the most about Mass Effect was how lived in it all felt, and that lended itself to the world's authenticity. How have I like not been on this part of the ship yet? I could have sworn I saw the whole ship. The ship is a lot bigger than I thought it was. <laughs> Hi, can I talk to you guys? No? It was listening to the codex of all things that actually marked the turning point of the game for her. Sitting there painting her nails and sipping coffee while she listened to it instead of an audiobook was certainly a sight to behold the first time I saw it for myself. In reality, however, less than 1% of the stars have been explored. It's true there's a lot going on, and it's a testament to how interesting the story is that she got so invested in learning more. The gun's internal computer calculates the mass needed to reach the target based on distance, gravity, That's and atmosphere. That's so cool it's doing the physics as it goes from the block <laughs> a single block can supply thousands of rounds that's awesome i love that this incorporated in the lore <laughs> with the added context and background information on hand made her conversations with other characters that much more meaningful i'm listening to some of the codex i'm learning so much i feel like it's going to help me when i'm talking to the different people i'll have a better idea of like what answers might make them mad versus what might you know impress them it almost unlocked something for her akin to playing a new game plus where you have all the extra information of experiencing a game already and now you're able to pick up on new things that were just staring you right in the face the whole time and that makes sense why we've just joined the whole like citadel more recently and that's why we don't have anyone in the council yet but we do have an embassy God, that ambassador's a douche. She could sense tension surrounding people's opinions on certain subjects, and was able to more delicately maneuver through the conversations. What's up, Tali? Amazing, Shepard. Thank I've you. Drive core like this before. Yeah, we have a pretty impressive I can't drive core. You, able to fit it into a ship this small. <laughs> you should talk to Joker to about it. Why... Not to mention, she was starting to pick up on new pieces of information being added to the puzzle of what the heck is going on here. I want to know more about the pilgrimage. When my people reach maturity, we leave our birth ships and seek acceptance with a new crew. To prove our worth, we embark on a pilgrimage. We only return once we have found something of value. And she returns with our drive core. <laughs> This time around, she was talking my ear off about the lore lying in bed at the end of the day. Our physiology allows us to meld with other beings. It's called melding. So they like physiology, like mind to mind, they can meld with the male from another species, and then that's how they reproduce. But as a result, they get misidentified, and so there's a lot of rumors around their species, like they're like hoes and stuff. <laughs> In terms of the actual gunplay, she followed pretty standard girlfriend procedures. Standing out in the wide open, zoomed into her scope, and shooting until her gun overheats was how most conflicts got solved. Imagine a sniper just like, sitting out, just wide open on the staircase. <laughs> oh. I mean, you can imagine that, and that's basically me. Her crewmates helped out with some of the heavy lifting, and although ordering them around took some getting used to, they were a lot more useful than some of the other companions she's encountered in games. Can you guys not stay alive for like five seconds? Okay, clearly I have to be a better commander. She's confidently announced her status as a self-proclaimed master quickscoper. Admittedly, the enemies in this game tend to try and run you down, so some level of haste is good to have when aiming. Okay, you guys have snipers while well, I have snipies too. Watching it back, I was actually like, damn. Where'd you learn to do that? Because I never taught you. Ha! I just no-scoped that. I guess it was a skill developed out of necessity, and her lack of using cover is more than likely to blame. I was admiring the waterfall and I said I died. <laughs> Classic. She never really got hung up on any levels in particular, and used her janky strategy through pretty much the entire game. Overall, the firefights aren't terribly difficult to begin with. Most of her restarts were due to teammates going down. Kated. Good lord. Now. On to the real meat of the game, and the reason we brought her here in the first place. The dialogue. Let me out! Let me out! Oh my god! He just... In conversations, the right option usually advances the conversation, while the left are investigations, which allow her to dig deeper into whatever topic they're on. She'd almost always exhaust the investigate menu to get as much info as she could before making her decision. Commander, please tell me you know what this 
means because I don't. Please tell me you can make sense of it. My girlfriend explained that decisions felt real and the body language and facial expressions made things seem less like she was playing a game and more like she was having an actual conversation. Her eyes are awesome. Like, it's so human-like, but not like Uncanny Valley. The characters weren't stiff or awkward, and there's a lot of personality behind the words that they say. This meant that a lot of her responses were a bit more thoughtful than usual, since she knew how her answer would affect someone's opinion of her. It's so cool, like, her movements. You can totally tell that she's, like, talking to me, but you can't even see her mouth move. It's, like, entirely, like, body movement. It's so cool! After her first few major decisions, she figured out that her actions this game were going to have tangible consequences, but the scope of what that meant was muddy for her. Suddenly, every conversation had this itch in the back of her mind that it might somehow have a butterfly effect on something down the road somewhere. What will you sing? Will you release us? Are we to fade away once more? Commander, I don't trust this thing. We know its kind are killers. Mm -hmm. The tank is rigged with acid. I recommend using it. They made a mistake. They let the Krogan go too far. This is a chance for us to atone. She has done nothing to us. Oh, God. Your companions hear the truth. You have the power to free us or return our people to the silence of memory. I mean, I'm generally trying not to kill when I don't have to. Do I free her or just won't kill her? I won't destroy your entire race. You'll go free. You. Will give us the chance to compose a new. Yep, but we you gotta keep your word. If you do me once again, then I'm not gonna to be so forgiving. Children. As someone with a little more experience than her with games, I have the wherewithal to know that programmers can only make so much game. Realistically, the infinite possibilities of change that she was afraid of is completely ludicrous. There's no way to account for every possible permutation of decision and outcome, so scrutinizing every single conversation was a whole lot of stress for nothing. We stay put until the council sends the reinforcements we requested. Mm, I don't think it's gonna we happen. Are reinforcements. What? You're all they sent? Yep. I told the council to send a fleet. So what have you found? Saren's base of operations. He set up a research facility here. This is his base of operations? Very well fortified. What's Saren researching? He's using the facility to breed an army of Krogan. How is He's that trying possible? to breed Krogan? Apparently, Saren has Yo, discovered I'm a glad cure that I brought Rex with me. Still, she handled every single choice with the gravity of a life and death situation. Which is good, because sometimes lives really were at stake. We must ensure that this facility and its secrets are destroyed. Destroy? I don't think so. Our people are dying. This cure can save them. If that cure leaves this planet, the Krogan will become unstoppable. We can't make the same mistake again. We are not a mistake. Damn, oh, uh, Rex is getting pissed. Wait, Rex, why are you shooting guns? This isn't right, Shepard. If there's a cure for the genophage, we can't destroy it. I understand you're upset, but we both know Saren's the enemy here. He's the one you should be angry with. Really? Saren created a cure for my people. You want to destroy it. The lines between friend and foe are getting a little blurry from where I stand. This isn't a cure, it's a weapon. And if Saren is allowed to use it, you won't be around to reap the benefits. None of us will. This is the fate of my entire people we're talking about. If you can't give me a better reason than this to destroy the hopes of my people, then I'm done with you. Are you kidding you me, Brax? The mission. So that's it. All this time, and that's all I get from you. God damn! We're in the standoff! Rex, we're supposed to be on the same team! Rex, please. We can discuss this. No more talk, Shepard. I've got to do this my way. Is he about to shoot me? So what else? Ashley shot him. I don't think so, friend. Okay, Ashley, I think you made your point, like- Why the hell did you do that? I was still talking to him. I'm sorry, ma'am. I couldn't take the risk that he might injure you, or worse. That's not your call. Never do that again, understood? Understood. Vermeer has some big decisions, and unfortunately for her, Rex's death was out of her control. Good lord! Everyone's tendrils are coming to a head! Rex! 
I put so many points in you! If she'd done things differently up until this point, she could have saved him. But that's the way it goes sometimes. Everyone's pissed! I cannot do politics. This was obviously a shock for her, considering she'd spent most of her playthrough diligently protecting her crew, and her goal of getting everyone out alive ended here. This was her wake-up call that crew members could actually die, and that this might not be the last. I don't expect many of us will make it out alive. No! And that makes what I'm going to ask even more difficult. I need one of your men to accompany me. What? To help coordinate the teams. What? You expect me to commit one of my people to your command? We are all I have to send if your people are one of my people with risk, you to die? You really by <gasps> During the assault on Saren's base, she had to choose between Ashley or Caden. God. I mean, Ashley's been kicking ass in these missions, but she also just shot Rex, but he might have been about to shoot me, but I was trying to talk him down. I mean, I think they said that I need Caden to arm the bomb. Why are they making me make this decision? No! Oh! Allegedly, she claimed she chose Caden because of his skills with electronics, but we all know the real reason was because he was being flirty with her. <laughs> yeah, I, re I read a lot of those books when I was a kid. <laughs> a girl goes to space to prove himself worthy of a woman he loves or... Oh! You know, for justice. Is he flirting with me? Ashley, on the other hand, had also just gone against direct orders and killed Rex. So my girlfriend was a little bit bitter about that, even if it did ultimately save her life. I'm sorry, Ashley. Please survive. Please William survive. The captain. While in Saren's base, she stumbles upon this game's big twist, and arguably the real antagonist of the game, Sovereign. Oh, what the hell is going on? You are not Saren. What is that? Some kind of is that the ship? Interface? I am Sovereign. Oh, it's the ship, which I think I- didn't I just call that? So essentially, Saren has been indoctrinated by a Reaper this entire time, and it intends to wipe out the galaxy. Your extinction is inevitable. We are the end of everything. Whatever your plan is, it's gonna fail. I'll make sure of that. I'm very brave. She clearly has a lot of questions, but we're kind of in the middle of a giant war, so it'll have to wait. It's done, Commander. Go get Williams and get the hell out of here. Screw that. We can handle ourselves. Go back and get Elenko. Oh my god, I have to pick one of them again? Ugh. Stay alive. I'll be coming to get you too, Ash. I think we both know that's not gonna happen, Commander. Oh, I had to pick a decision. Damn it. Suppressing fire. Cover your flank. Maybe let's get you to the med. Yep, come on, Normandy. Come on, Normandy. I'm carrying him! Alright, everybody, hang on! Fuck. Uh, Ashley! She tries to take this information back to the council, but to the surprise of literally no one, they don't believe her. It's highly possible Saren is using false information to throw you off balance. I literally talked Our to Reaper. intelligence has never turned up any corroborating information. Oh my god! This is like the 50th time this game that the council has completely blown her off, and it's starting to really grate on her. We have the situation under control. No, you don't. If Saren finds the conduit, we're all screwed. We have to go to Ilos. Ambassador Udina, I get the sense Commander Shepard isn't willing to let this go. We've locked out all the Normandy's primary systems until for the notice you're grounded. Wow. Regardless, even though they grounded her ship, her crew was still there to keep her company. Yo, it's getting spicy! Sorry to interrupt, Commander. Damn it, Joker! Anderson. Thankfully, Anderson had her back and was willing to throw some hands to get her ship up off the ground. Anderson! <laughs> Anderson. I didn't send <gasps> You just punched him out! <laughs> Serves you right! Come on, Joker, get me off this junk. Yeah, we're getting out of here, baby! Let's go. Get us out of here, Joker. Now. He's so excited about this. We've already been doing this for the council. We're doing this just for the good of mankind. And the thing is, if 
we win, no one hears about it. If we lose, no one hears about it. Uh, Commander? We've got company. Take us down, Joker. Lock in on the coordinates. Negative on that, Commander. The nearest landing zone's two clicks away. 20 meters? We'll never get in close enough for a drop. We can we do have it. To try. Find another landing zone. There is no other landing zone! The descent angle's too steep. It's our only option. I'm going it's on my rover. An it's a suicide run. We don't. I can do it. You got this, Joker. Joker. I can do it. You got this, You're Joker. You're head down to the Mako. Joker, drop us right on top of that bastard. Hell yeah! Upon arrival in Ilos, she just misses Saren. We're doing tactical maneuvers. You got this, Joker. You two, keep moving inside. You got this, Joker. Yeah! My rover! Please squish him. Please squish him. Get in, get in. Damn it. But get some important details for her troubles. We're going in. Wait, what? Um. Oh, shit. Okay. Uh. Huh. This is getting creepy. Vigil. You are not Prothean, but you are not machine either. No. This eventuality was one of many that was anticipated, unlike the other that passed recently. He didn't Perhaps give the info to Saren! He only, he's only given it to me! Why did you bring me here? You must break a cycle that has continued for millions Please. of years. Please. When but you to break stop the cycle. It, you must understand, or you will make the same mistakes we did. Saren's got enough of a head start. Oh, I've got a boatload of out. new information. The one you call Saren has not reached the conduit. Not yet. There is still hope if you hurry. Oh, damn. Okay, okay. Ironically, Saren is attacking the Citadel, so she needs to race back over there to confront him. Oh, no. Woo! The Council should have listened to us. It's an attack on the Citadel! Oh, my God! Fortunately, there's a conduit on this planet that acts as a back door, and she can use that to warp back and have a showdown. Wait, the conduit's closing. We gotta get to it. I have a time limit! Just get there. Just get there. Just get there. Just get there! Tarni, if you've ever driven a car in your life, just get there! As it turns out, the Citadel is a giant mass relay, and Sovereign's goal is to open it to allow the Reapers to invade from dark space. The station is actually an enormous mass <gasps> relay, one that links to dark space. Oh my the god. The, the Citadel horizon. is a giant relay station? When the Citadel relay is activated, the Reapers will pour through, and all you know will <gasps> be destroyed. Commander Shepard's job is to stop Saren from handing the keys over to the Reaper and basically save the galaxy. We made it! <laughs> Good work, guys. Come on, everybody. Saren, I got bones to pick with you. Don't let the enemy ships inside the arms. They're trying to get in. No, they made it in. Shit. We're all fucked unless we save everybody. <gasps> it's trying to connect. No, we can't let it redirect. No. There we are. Saren's locked the elevator. Suit up. We're going outside. Damn, we're going outside? Come on, guys. We have to save everyone. Yeah, I think we probably want to go this way. Okay, we're going this way. Back on up, boys. We're letting them come to us. I figure if there are enemies somewhere, that's probably where we should go. Ooh, 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 the Citadel Defense Turret. Okay. Let's take out the ship. Yeah, we took out the drop ship! Where we go from there? I'm not entirely sure. Well, oh, we can get in through this access hatch. Oh my god, we're going back inside, guys. Ha, <laughs> we're literally by the council. They should have listened to me. This is like a really fucked up time to say I told you so. But I told you so. There he is! There he is! He just dropped! Yup. He's doing his Green Lantern shit. I was afraid you wouldn't make it in time, Shepard. In time for what? The final confrontation. In a few minutes, Sovereign will have full control of all the He's trying systems. to manipulate me. The relay will open. The relay Meanwhile, will open. he's the one who was manipulated. I've still got a few tricks up my sleeve. Sovereign recognizes your value. You've impressed it. 
surrender to the Reapers, and you will be spared. No. Join us, and we can find a place for you. Enough talk. No more stalling, Saren. Let's finish this. I show trouble. Everyone spread out. We're gonna retreat back. I she worked pretty well though, so I'm gonna do that again. Yeah! Good work, everybody! He's crashing through the glass! Oh my god, he's like dead, dead. With Saren now gone, Shepard takes back control of the Citadel and has some more big decisions to make. Destiny Ascension. Main drives offline. Kinetic barriers down 40%. The Council is on board. I repeat, the Council is on board. Normandy to the Citadel. Normandy! Normandy to the Citadel. Please tell me that's you, Commander. I'm here, Joker. We caught that distress call, Commander. I'm sitting here in the Andura sector with the entire Arturus fleet. We can save the Ascension. Just unlock the relays around the Citadel and we'll send the cavalry in. Are you really willing to sacrifice human lives to save oh the Council Oh my god. Shepherd? What's the order, Commander? Come in now to save the Ascension, or hold back? Oh my god, I have to choose between saving the Council? Oh my god. The first of which is whether or not to save the Council that she's been bumping elbows with the entire game. Or she can focus her attention on taking out Sovereign. I guess they should have listened to her when they had the chance. I think we're supposed to, you know, for the greater good. I think that's like the important thing, you know? Wait until those arms open, Joker. Yep. We need all our ships focusing on Sovereign, even if it means sacrificing the Council. All Alliance ships, all formation. Wait for a shot at Sovereign. Nothing else matters. Besides, the Council's been a pain Nothing in my ass. Matters. Does that mean they need to die? No, but like, come on, we gotta save the Greater God. This is the Ascension. We are taking heavy damage. Guardian defenses are over. Kinetic barriers are offline. Commander, they closed the channel. God, they make me make tough decisions. Oh damn, I see. So that was the council. Shit. Bye, council. Yeah, it's opening! It's opening! Attack Sovereign! Attack Sovereign! While the council's getting blown to smithereens, Saren's body gets assimilated by Sovereign for one final showdown. What's going on? Oh, big bad boss fight. Jumpy thing. And this station is mine. And now she gets to have the real final battle of the game with it. Oh shit, guys are dropping in. Ooh, okay, okay. Good work, everybody. Sovereign's too strong. We have to pull back. Negative. This is our only chance. Take yeah, that Captain! Down, no matter what the cost. You guys to take out the ads. Shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on. Come on, guys. Did we do it? Woo! Yo! Yo! We killed it! We killed it! the Normandy. It shields are down. Now's our chance. Everybody shoot it, shoot it, shoot it, shoot it. With everything we got. Come on, come on, Joker. Come on, Joker. Come on, everybody. Shoot it, shoot it, shoot it. This is the chance. Yeah, he's doing his maneuvering. Effort. After the defeat of Saren, for real this time, she has one final decision to make. We need to talk about what happened to the council. We need to make a new council. The right thing. We had to hold our fleet back to go after Sovereign. Yep. It was the only way. I agree, but this also presents us with an opportunity. And that's which human will finally represent us with a seat on the council. Given everything you've done, Commander, the Alliance will want to know who you think our council chairman should be. Anderson! We're about to go to war. We need someone with military experience. 
Someone like Captain Anderson. Yup! He's my boy! You make a good case. Captain, are you ready for this? And then this? you can keep being an ambassador, whatever. So, the million dollar question is when are these choices going to start coming back up? Well, unfortunately, we won't see the consequences of her decisions until the next Mass Effect game. For now, she's left to live with her decisions and anxiously wait out whether or not they'll come back to bite her in the ass. The Reapers are still out there. They're coming. <gasps> and I'm gonna find some way to stop them. She expressed some disappointment that she didn't get to immediately see the fruits of her labor, but if anything, that just makes her more excited for the next game. Shepard's right. We're headed for war with the Reapers. If we lose, it's the end of all life as we know it. We have to show the rest of the galaxy what it takes to survive. Uh-huh. With the support of the other races, we can win this battle. We can! With them behind us, we can stand against the Reapers' return and drive them back into dark space. Yeah! Games are a journey after all, and part of the journey is living with your decisions. There's more of these games, right? Why do I have a feeling those ones are gonna make me make even harder decisions? <laughs>